Good afternoon. We have checked out of our hotel and we decided to come to a coffee shop called Brew Hole that is close to the Tag Billerin Ferry Port. That's where we'll be getting the ferry later on to go from here in Bohol back to Cebu. This wasn't the original coffee shop that we had actually planned to come to. While we were in Mobile, we went to Astoria and the barista there recommended three different coffee shops here. And one of them is actually just up the street from here, but when we arrived, it was closed. So this is our second choice, but it actually ended up being quite nice. And now we need to head towards the ticket office in order to make sure that we are checked in for our ferry crossing. But before that, we're a little bit hungry, so we need to make sure that we've got snacks and food for the road. just arrived at Cebu Airport after what was supposed to be a two hour and 10 minute ferry from Bohol to Cebu Port that actually arrived early. Like I don't know when the last time some kind of public transportation was 15 or 20 minutes early. Well, honestly, it was probably one of the smoothest ferry rides that I can remember. That was all in all very, very pleasant. When we arrived at Cebu Ferry Port, our intention was to get a metered taxi to the airport, but there didn't seem to be a taxi stand and there weren't any metered taxis around. What we did find were people offering a good price for a taxi and they offered 700 pesos and 800 pesos, but Nick ended up checking Grab and we got it for 524 pesos. Maybe a meter taxi, if we could have found one, would have been cheaper, but at least we felt like that was the cheapest going at that particular time. Yeah, I think the thing was that if there were meter taxis around, it was in my own impossible to find them, and I'm pretty sure that if we asked anybody, then they would have tried to focus us into their taxi instead. So it just would have been a bit of a wild goose chase. So. Definitely happier for having got the grab, even though we maybe paid a little bit extra for it. We are now at the airport and our flight isn't until tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And because we are budget travelers, we have decided to spend our time in the Priority Pass Lounge, which is open 24 hours. However, because it's still the previous day. I think it's maybe only 9 p.m. We don't know if we're gonna be allowed to go through security since our flight is technically still tomorrow. On the Amex website, the Priority Pass has no restrictions, but on the Priority Pass website, it says a two hour time limit, so. Let's find out, but we definitely have been that before. started really well. We got through security with no problem. We found the lounge and we saw two signs out front that were a little bit concerning and contradicted what was online. We went into the lounge and the staff member informed us that the lounge closed in 40 minutes, which obviously confused us because it is a 24-hour lounge according to the American Express website, the Priority Pass website, and their own Plaza Premium Lounge website. So obviously we were a little bit confused. We asked for some clarification and they said, oh yeah, this is on our website. We then obviously came back to them having 
literally showing them the websites on which it clearly stated 24 hours, to which they then provided us a screenshot of their entry on Google Maps, which had the correct opening times. I then questioned whether Google was more correct than their own company's website. Long story short, we got to basically scoff down a bunch of food and a couple of beers before getting escorted out of the lounge all about an hour later. Our flight isn't for another seven hours, uh, which obviously was not part of the plan. Our plan was to relax in a very comfortable lounge and I'm very sad that we're not gonna get that experience because to be honest, their chairs looked and felt amazingly comfortable for the amount of time that we were in there. Yep, I was actually quite looking forward to the prospect of bedding down there because it would have been great. It was super clean and the food that we did scoff down was really good and yummy. Yep, but can't enjoy it now. So there we go. And as a result, they're not getting a lounge rating because... They didn't allow us there for long enough to even be able to give them one, so that's what you get and we just don't have a positive feeling about it. And I don't think that I could give ratings on things that actually are unaffected by this experience fairly, because at the moment, my experience would cloud my judgment, even though it actually has no bearing on the categories in which we rate lounges. I'm sure if we had the time in the lounge to be able to appreciate it properly, it would actually get a very nice rating because from the impressions that we got, then it was looking really good. It would probably be a decent mid-tier lounge. Yep, but we just don't feel like we're in the mood to be objective about it, so therefore it's probably not worth going. So now it begins about seven hours of just trying to wait until I flight, I guess. Yeah, it's 11 p.m. and our flight doesn't leave until 6. I'm sure we'll end up boarding around 5, 5.30, but it's just a lot of time to kill in not so comfortable seats with bright lights and surrounded by noises and people when that's not what we were expecting based on three official websites. It's a first world problem. Fundamentally, had the website actually reflected the correct information, then we would have just made alternative arrangements. Like this would not have happened and we would be holed up in a hotel for the night. But as things stand now, we feel like we've been basically completely misled. And it's meant that we're now either gonna have to just try and pull an all nighter or just sleep rough in an airport that is really not conducive to sleep. So yeah, not an overall positive experience so far. Now we're both tired because it's like 11 p.m. and we're like grumpy and it's only gonna get worse. Both of us managed to doze on the uncomfortable airport benches and we did that for four or five hours. It was a bit of a challenge considering the fact that each of them had armrests as well protruding from them so you kind of had to hold yourself correctly to get a decent sleeping position. But... You could only lie on one side or you could completely flip yourself over in order to get to the other side. Never mind the constant announcements about gate changes and boarding. However, it is now 5 a.m. and we have snuck back into the lounge. I think we're going to have about half an hour here. And the good news is that there was no fuss about us re-entering because it's a different day.
I'm not going to do the whole Nick thing where he's like, oh, don't come in, or like, we don't want you here. Come on in. This is our bedroom. It is a really good size. Bed feels comfy. Sheets look clean. I love that we have two bedside tables. That's not something we get regularly and it's nice to be able to put our phones on either side. Two rolls of toilet paper, again, it will make certain that we don't have to ask so often. Behind us we have the air conditioning, which is always nice. We have a TV that Nick pointed out. Apparently we can connect HDMI to it so we can watch shows on the big screen. We have a closet to put all of our stuff in, which is always nice to have somewhere to put our bags. Heading into the washroom, it's small, but number one, very clean. And my favorite part is it's not a wet room. We have an actual shower where the toilet won't get wet. Best thing ever. Um. That is it for today, so we will pick this up tomorrow. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.